in between the treasury and the county government. All right, Kwame, explain something to me. Uh, you mentioned the, the CAS uh, yeah. debate that has been happening. And when the same question was posed to the government's chief advisor, the president's yes. <laughs> chief economic advisor, David yeah. Ndee, yes. um, he said, don't look at absolute numbers. That is yeah. a drop in the ocean. Look at the budget deficit. A and even as you help us understand whether yeah. that makes yeah. sense or yeah. not, yeah. Um, this coffers, because you mentioned a vault, and I remember yesterday when I was writing down my questions in preparation for this interview, I was like, is there a vault somewhere where cash is kept? You know, because we were told coffers are empty. Or is the situation, as David Murade pointed it, uh, painted it yesterday, he was on NTV, and he said uh, KRA collects money on a daily basis. This money that is collected daily is the one, and it's the same thing that Raila would point that uh, Raila Odinga has made on, uh, on several occasions, that it is this money that we collect daily that is then yeah. distributed to the various needs. Yeah. How does it work? Kuna mahali, kuna cave, or something, <laughs> or, yeah. Okay. So remember, the government's main sources of income is just basically taxes, mostly taxes, right? Mm. Uh, so when the taxes come, and, 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 and in no estimation, the KRA collects about 6 billion shillings every day. The government of Kenya, on the other hand, spends 10 billion or so every day, about 9 billion and thereabouts, based on last year's budget. So there's that 3 billion gap, which is covered in another way through government borrowing, whether externally or internally. Now, because the major source of income is, or rather revenues for government, is uh, taxes, KRA has to work really, really hard to make that money available. Uh, and so that money is available, or rather is collected, based on whether we send our VAT returns, our pay-as-you-earn returns, and all those other things that we, we do. And, uh, and then that is sent all the way through the KRA's collection into, obviously, the exchequer, or the government's main account at the central bank. Then it is allocated, based on what had been, uh, passed by Parliament. Is this what we call the Consolidated Fund? The Consolidated mm -hmm. Fund, yes, uh, yes, it's, it's, it's what's called the Consolidated Fund. I mean, the Consolidated Fund is a name for an account. Right? Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, okay. Okay. for an account. It's, it's, yes. Now, so basically once it's there, it's determined and the withdrawals are made based on what had been approved in the budget. And the com control of budget, obviously, whenever approvals, are, I mean, uh, uh, disbursements or any uh, withdrawals are to be made, it has to be against what parliament passed through the appropriations law so they know this amount is supposed to go to this county these are the things and, and, and all that so basically mo most of it is administration but the problem is not taxes mm -hmm. um right now the problem is the spending is ahead of taxes so if you take for instance international government i think close to 70 percent of all spending is salaries so if for instance government has not raised enough money from the borrowing Treasury bills and treasury bonds, which is a bit, the government is a little bit behind on that now, uh, but you have to pay salaries because salaries are available every month when people come in. So basically, you are you, the 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 government is at behind payments, and because those obligations come, obviously something has to be done. And as Senator has mentioned one of the things that the national government does, and which is, I think Parliament should respond to, is. National government prioritizes its own needs. So mm -hmm. for instance, the Treasury released at the end of March all the payments that have been made. All counties have already received 53% of the money that was voted for them by Parliament last year. Yeah. Now, if you look at counties that have, uh, if you look at the national governments, uh, what they call the ministries and, and, and uh, MDAs, MDAs. Uh, uh, ministries, departments, mm -hmm. and yes. agencies, yes. right? Uh, the national government has prioritized its own. So, for instance, in the Ministry of Interior, which is important, where the police and all these other people lie, 91% of the payments that were due to them have already been made. So when the police are not available in Kilifi, or they have not been available in Kilifi, they cannot give the same excuse as county workers who have not been paid for two months. They have been received. So it looks like the national government, whether it's because of the elections or because security is supposed to be very, very important, they have privileged payments for the police and the military. And you can justify that any way you want to. On the other hand, the, the new administration established nine new departments, which were not in the last budget. And an additional 47 billion has been meant, brought in for, for those. So it is just about a decision being made in the treasury about what priorities will we fund today. Uh, so you have TSC, TSC is about, I think, 60% or close to that. So basically what is, uh, what is happening is when money is short and you have not raised as enough, as enough money as was expected, there was a eurobond that was supposed to come, it has been delayed, 
uh, in the last few weeks, I think government has not got enough money from the treasury bills and treasury bonds as well because I think markets are not, or banks are not sure that with inflation at 10%, they want to lend to government at 12 they want a bigger interest rate and that, 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 that seems not to be working yet. So when that money is not coming in as was anticipated, somebody has to make a decision. The decision that is being made now is it's counties that are suffering. Because counties don't have good defenders and counties are very easy to, to blame. Uh, so that's what's happening. Now this is a political choice and mm. I think it needs to be fixed by parliament. Now parliament of course is also two arms. There's the Senate, which tends to be a little bit more sober about the government, about, about counties. And there's the National Assembly, which obviously says what Treasury tells them to do. Yeah. Mm. So, for instance, the Division of Revenue Bill, which Senate has been discussing for close to a month, maybe less, yes, yes. right, was passed in the same day, one afternoon, yes. in the National Assembly. Yes. While the Senate actually had to go back and look at all the numbers and try to argue one way or the other. Mm. So the National Assembly just is asked by Treasury, please jump, and they ask how high. The Senate, <laughs> on the other hand, has to look at the Division of Revenue Bill and ask ourselves. The Commission on Revenue Allocation had requested, this is for the next budget year, that the counties be allocated 407 billion shillings. We at the Institute of Economic Affairs think that's fair, but still it's actually much, much lower than what counties should receive. Uh, the, the, the Treasury had asked for it to be at 370 billion, which has been like that for the last three years. And, and obviously the, the, the Senate had wanted a bigger number. So it is that negotiation process that led to that law that passed, which kept it at 385. So in, the, in a space of two years, no, three years now, counties have only received an additional 15 billion shillings from the 370. Mm. In that time, total national spending has gone up by a trillion. Mm. So obviously this is the problem, that when new money is available, the national government and its agencies are prioritized in terms of what their allocations are and there's an, a belief that county governments can stay at the same level as they are so we calculated for instance inflation has been high if you take the 385 billion that has been awarded for the next budget season which starts on first of july and last in 2021 uh yes 2021 2021 financial year that started in 2021 you will see that the amount of money given to parliament to 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 the counties or rather uh, proposed for counties in the law that is awaiting presidential approval is actually less if you take account of inflation than what was provided in 370. in other words counties are receiving less money national government is getting more money and all that now part of it is explained by paying for debts mm. but those are not debts that the national the, the county governments procured those are debts that the national assembly together with the with the, the executive agreed and then they procured. So that's it. So the, 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 the counties seem to be in a very tough place. Now, no wonder they're giving notices up here. And they don't only have little money, but also that money is now being delayed. Now imagine being a governor in Sierra County or Kilifi, for instance, and you haven't paid your workers for two months. Um, that's hell. You're really, really serious because you have to go to the office every day and all that. So it's, it's, it's not an easy thing. And part of it is just unfairness in the distribution of revenue. Uh, division of revenue and unfairness in the disbursements because the national government seems to disburse to itself uh, as a priority in relation to counties and it's not fair so that's 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 really really true and that's a political problem it's a political problem and it's I, interesting i'm wondering whether you and the author of this article uh and senator 